What we're going to cover is what clients are really looking for today in the IP telephony space. Why are people moving to IP telephony? The number one thing is the reliability and availability of the system. If the system's not reliable, why move to it, right? If you don't pick up your phone and it doesn't work, why buy it? So we can all have the you know, 5,000 features, but if the phone doesn't work, it doesn't matter what features you have, correct? You want a reliable system that's going to work every time you pick up the phone. And we'll talk about that because in the older days, what we call the TDM or the old school Nortel boxes, they were extremely reliable. Probably some of the most reliable boxes out there on the market. But as time has changed, so has technology. And unfortunately, Nortel didn't really grasp the change like they should have. And that's why they're kind of no longer Nortel and they're Avaya now. You want to make sure it's scalable. You want to look for your growth of your system. Even though you're only, let's say you're only 100 employees a day, how many do you think you'll be in two, three, five years? Because this system should last you 15 years. 10 to 15 years is what you should expect to get out of a PBX today. Easy to manage and ease of use. Do you have to call the white van out to come out and maintain your system to do moves as and changes? Or can you do it yourself? It's a big question now. The, the model of having the phone company come out and manage your phone system has kind of changed. I don't know if Scott could probably address this better than I because they used to roll the white vans, but those days have definitely moved on. And companies that aren't just into that change aren't staying in business because that model has definitely moved. Then the total cost of ownership. And we'll talk about this because this is probably the biggest piece of your buying criteria right here. How much is it really going to cost you to own that system? The upfront cost is probably 25% of what that system is really going to cost you over the next 10 years. Look at what it's really going to cost you to have it 5, 10, even 15 years down the road. How much money are you really going to have invested in that system? Are your forklifts that are going to be involved as you grow? Those are things you want to look at. We'll talk more in depth about that. So real quick, what's going on in the industry? You'll notice uh, in the TDM versus IP telephony. TDM, again, is the old school PBXs that used to be all that was out there, right? They worked forever. They ha always had an inc increase in sales every year, year over year. The first year that changed was in the year 2000. They had their first decline in sales ever in the PBX space. And of course, what are everybody blaming on? Oh, that's because everybody spent all their money on Y2K, getting prepped for that. So of course we saw a decline in sales. Well, they've actually seen a decline in sales every year since. IP telephony actually outsold TDM in the year 2005. Guys, it's not a matter of if IP and telephony is here to stay or not anymore, or if you're going to change to it. It's just a matter of when. Even your telephone company is already running IP telephony on their core systems today. When you make long distance calls and now everything else, it's all going over IP these days. The days of ATM networks, frame relay, those are dying off by the minute. Everything's moving to IP. Does it make sense? All right. So we'll keep moving through it. And this is just kind of going to show you a little proving ground of what is really going on. If you think about those legacy or TDM companies we've talked about on the slides, you can see them listed here. Now Avaya and Nortel have, com com you know, have combined, so that negative just went up. Mitel and Intertel have merged. NEC is still out there. And of course Avaya and Siemens. But you'll notice that growth has all been negative over those. And if you look at the pure IP players, and I'm going to use Cisco a lot in this because Cisco is probably one of our number one competitors out there in IP telephony. They're a pure IP telephony solution just like we are. But you can look at the growth rate and you can see who's growing the most. Now Cisco is a huge company. They're a marketing machine. You know, they, they do a great job marketing and get putting products out there. They're everywhere. They're a huge company, a lot bigger than us. So our growth has been outstanding. Even in the down economy, we're still growing somewhere near between 35 and 40 percent quarter over quarter every quarter. So things have been really good. We actually went public back in uh, 2007, but we'll talk more about that as we go through the demo. Now, I mentioned the uh, old phone systems, the legacy or TDM, whatever you prefer to call them. Remember what I said, they worked. You picked up your phone, you had dial tone. You could make and take calls, no problem. They had all these features, but most people didn't know how to use them because they were pretty complicated to use the features on the phones. You might be able to transfer and, con transfer and conference if you were lucky, but that was about it. Also, the other problem with these were is we, they had what they called a silo effect, meaning that if you were a multi-site company, you'd have your PBX sitting in your office, and if you decided to open an office across town, more than likely you had to go buy a whole other PBX and put out there, including voicemail and everything. So now you've got two duplicated systems at each location. They couldn't communicate with one another in the early days. Then they started doing tie lines between, were voice T1 tie lines, which were fairly expensive, so you could four-digit it down, but you still had to maintain them separately. You still had to log into them and, and do your moves as and changes separately. As we got smarter, we started using the wide area network to communicate. So again, you can now communicate with one another, but you're still in that silo effect, meaning every system was different. And they all had their own maintenance contracts, et cetera. The other, um, the, you know, so as you grow, it just, it just really became very expensive. Again, very reliable, but very feature limited and fixed features in what we call the silo effect of those, for sure. One of the big problems was, is if let's say you put in a system, you had 200 users. 
Well, as you grew your company, that system you have may only go to 200. So what did you do? You either had to add some shelves or some processors, or you had to just come in and forklift the whole thing and come in with a whole new system because you'd outgrown that one already. So now you've just done a forklift change, which becomes very expensive in a hurry as well. So those are what's the negatives that are driving people away from the, uh, the legacy PBXs. And obviously, the rolling that little white van at $90 an hour with three-hour minimum just to add a new user gets pretty expensive as well. Now, as we move into IP telephony, and now I use IP telephony as a term. I need to change this slide. It says voice over IP. The reason I don't use voice over IP is because when you say voice over IP, a lot of people think of like Vonage, Skype, and that, that's not who we are. We're more of a true PBX replacement. But I want to talk about how people are getting into this space and how they're growing into it, meeting our competitors. There's the legacy guys, the Nortels, the Avayas, the Mitels that have said, okay, we're going, to have, we're going to have to move into IP telephony. How do we get there? we got millions of customers out there. How do we move them and migrate them into IP telephony? And it's been a challenge for them. I mean, Nortel was probably the biggest challenge of them all. And Avaya went from being a publicly traded company to being a privately held company by an investment firm called Silver Lake. And I guess now Silver Lake owns both of them. So uh, sooner or later, it'll be interesting what they do with that. So that's been a real hard challenge. Then there's also the mode of acquisition. If you think about when 3Com first got into space, who's no longer in the space, but when they got into it, it was through an acquisition. They purchased NBX from a UK company and bought them over as their IP telephony solution. You think about companies like Cisco, and there's just some of the companies they've bought to develop their solution. Now granted, remember I said earlier, Cisco's a great company, but anytime you take 21, and actually the list is up to, uh, Scott, you know, I think it's 28 now. <coughs> I think it's 28 different companies they've merged to bring together their IP telephony solution. I don't care how good of a company you are, when you bring that many together, you're going to have your challenges, and they have had their challenges over that time. Now don't get me wrong, they're still a valid competitor, but this is why they're having some issues out in the marketplace trying to bring together all those companies as one. And they are still our largest competitor, absolutely. And then there's the way we've gotten into it, which is what we call the native solution. And we'll talk a little bit more about this later. But we actually started the company in 1996 with zero customers. Probably one of the few times in your life you're glad to say you have zero customers. But it allowed us to develop a solution from a clean sheet of paper and introduce the product that you're going to see today during a demo. As mentioned, I started here back uh, 11 years ago when I was working for Cisco at the time, and we were developing their IP telephony solution. We were trying to do it on this server and their switches and all this. And finally, we told them to go buy Celsius. But you know, it, when I first came to Shortail and went through the interview, I was amazed at how well it worked. Because this was back in the, you know 11 years ago, IP telephony was still kind of a real big buzzword. And they let me have, see a demo of it. And I saw the demo, and I was like, no way that's going to work. There's just no way. But then they turned me loose in a lab for about two hours, just working on it myself and going in there and seeing how things worked and looking at the dial plans and the databases and et cetera. And I knew right then I was taking the job. I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm, gonna, I'm taking this job. Of course, you don't tell them that, right? But uh, because they they'd been chasing me for probably a year before I actually agreed to go out and do the interview. But it was, a, it was a breath of fresh air. I had done my CCIE and all that back then, and I'm so glad to be away from that. It's, it's been a really nice uh, change. 